Hello everybody, my name is Hannah Miller and I am an engineering student at Embry-Riddle. Hello, my name is Tyler Benoit and I'm an AMS student at Embry-Riddle. And if you don't know what that is, it's Aviation Maintenance Science. And I selected Tyler as my delivery warm-up partner because he has some prior experience in public speaking and because he was the only person that would agree to do to do these two exercises with me. Hello again, uh, so we're gonna move on to exercise one. So anyways, I'm Tyler again and uh, we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise here. So first off, I'm gonna name a place and then two objects and then Hannah is gonna explain them. So first off, the Sahara Desert and then the first object is a fork and the second object is some rope. All right, so hello again, I'm Hannah Miller and I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I am what's known as a traveling natural survivalist. In previous years, I have traveled to places such as the Amazon jungle. Terrible place, absolutely hated it there. But I have always brought with me these two very important objects as he's just shown you. This year, I am actually traveling to the Sahara Desert with well-known natural survivalist, Bear Grylls. First, I would like to introduce to you my trusty fork. This fork has been in my family for generations. It was handmade in Switzerland, as you can see here, and it was handmade by a family member of mine, my great, great, great grandmother, wonderful woman. She forged this fork in Switzerland out of the best type of metal. And inside this little blue compartment, if you take this off, it is a fire starting kit. This has saved me in so many scenarios from giving me a nice warm fire to a great hunting device to a great eating device and it acts also as a hairbrush pretty great especially for women with hair like mine now i want to dive back back into my previous experience the amazon jungle awful place like i said and it was just me this time no bear girls no nobody just me and this fork came in handy when I had to hunt tree frogs in order to survive. This fork, I believe, will do me great justice in the Sahara Desert from finding animals in possible areas of water to other areas in the sand. Who knows? You could find some mites maybe. I think it'll become a great hand. And the fire starting kit inside of it will be perfect for those very cold nights because as I'm sure you know, in the Sahara Desert, it gets extremely cold at night. Now moving on to the rope. This rope is actually the first rope I will be using on my missions. In previous years, I've only brought this fork, but this year, I bring the rope. You may ask why? Well, since I am doing a collaboration with Bear Grylls, the two of us surviving in the Sahara Desert, which is known to be the hardest place to survive in the world, I'll be using Bear Grylls certified grade A rope. Now, as you can see, it has two layers of rope. This inner layer is a hard plastic so that the rope is very stiff and firm. And the outside is like a braided uh, softer material. That way you're not hurting your hand so much. Now, what this, can this rope be used for? Well, Bear Grylls and I have talked about it a little bit and we've had many uses from traps to great places to climb, such as the Amazon rainforest. Would have been nice if I had it back then, but you know, it's okay. This rope will come in great handy. And with Bear Girls and I being on the same team, I think we'll do a great job. Now, I'd like to mention that I have never ever tried to survive in an area like the Sahara Desert horrible place and i'm hoping that by bear girls being there with me it won't be so bad hello welcome back to tyler's tv show today we are inviting the nicest lady ever hannah miller to tell us about herself and her fascination with birds so anyways let's start right off hot hannah who are you so i am hannah miller and i am what's called an orthonologist now if you don't know what that is that is a person who studies the behavior of birds either in their natural habitat or in uh, scientific laboratories. Gotcha. Uh, so apart from the birds, have you done anything uh, to heighten your career? Well, in 2017, I posted a book called The Secrets of the Birds. 
Now this is a New York Times best-selling book and I'm very proud of it. Uh, in this book, I dive into the behaviors and some interesting facts about the hundreds of species of birds that I have studied over my 20 years as an ornithologist. That's very, very fascinating. So what brings you here to Daytona Beach? I know you've been all around the world traveling, looking at birds, but now why are you here? Well, that's a great question, actually. Um, I'm originally coming from Arizona. Arizona is known for its wonderful species of birds. Um, they have quite the variety, but I'm here in Florida in particular just to conduct further research on the birds of Florida. Uh, one of the most well-known, I'm sure you've seen as you are a Florida native, is the sandhill crane. Um, very interesting bird species. I'd love to know more about. Gotcha. The one bird everyone hates here in Florida. But anyways, we're going to go to the next question here. Um, since you're on your end of your career now, and you're 20 years, and you're traveling all around the globe, mm -hmm. what made you first interested in this career? Well, it uh, drives all the way back from my childhood. So 10-year-old me was actually bit by my pet parakeet. Uh, his name was Toothless. He was a wonderful bird, um, very, very good boy, but uh, he did lead me to spark this kind of inspiration to discover more about birds' natural behaviors and why they tend to do certain things. So I think that's really where um, the inspiration to study birds and become an ornithologist just really spoke to me and brought me here. Gotcha, that's a pretty exciting uh, little happening there. So. <laughs> Out of your whole entire career, what would you say would be the most interesting or most exciting adventure you've been on? Ooh, so the most exciting adventure I've been on recently has been my trip to Uganda. Um, as you've known, uh, throughout my entire career, I've traveled to many different countries, over 100 countries, and they all have their own very unique species of birds. Uh, but to me, Uganda stuck out, stuck out uh, with its species of birds, mainly because of the variety. And uh, because of the birds there are just so distinctive and unique compared to the ones that I've seen here regularly at the in the U.S. That's really, really cool. I know the birds you said in Uganda are super nice and pretty and totally different than everywhere else, but is there any like bird that you find most compelling over any other? <laughs> Interestingly enough, I believe that the crow, the North American crow, is the most interesting bird. Um, this is mainly due to their intelligence. Now, I'm sure you've seen a crow probably, you know, sneak food from a store somewhere or, you know, just do something that's really clever and smart. This is because crows have a very high intelligence. Um, they also have only one mate. They mate for life. Um, and they also have their own regional dialects. So a bird in Boston may speak differently to, or no, a bird, a crow in Boston may speak differently to the crows that are in New York. It's pretty interesting. That's really cool. I know I'm, since my past, I also like crows, and I know a group of them was called a murder, which is, Correct. Which is pretty yes. interesting. So that's pretty darn cool. Anyways, um, since you find the crows most compelling, which is super interesting since you are an ornithologist, why should more people look into the birds and the studies behind them? Well, the, so the conservation of birds and um, avian alike, it's a very specific field of expertise. However, I find that it is important for people to know just about birds in general, from the ones that are in their backyard to the ones that they may see at a zoo, due to how birds help our environment. Um, they're very, very, they're a very key part of our environment, from uh, helping to transport foods and nutrients to other parts of the world, to their migrating habits. Birds are just a very, how do you say, like a, just a key role in not just the United States, but in the whole world. So I believe that everybody should have some sort of background knowledge into the birds of their region and why they are just so important to what keeps everything alive. That's super, super cool. I guess they are a key part in every single ecosystem you see around the globe. Yes, they're definitely they are. one of the only animals that can fly. So, is there anything else you're well versed in other than birds? Because I know you're pretty well versed oh, yes. in those. Well, uh, I don't have much free time, but in my free time, uh, I have been known as a world chess champion. Um, I just won my first competition this past year. Um, I'm sure you've seen on TV. Um, I'm also an Olympic gold champion. This is the 2016 Summer Olympics, I'm sure as you saw. I'm a bit rusty now. I'm more focused on my expertise as an orthonologist. Um, but yeah, and, oh, and I'm also a champion thousand piece puzzle solver. Um, I'm really into puzzles and that kind of thing because 
birds are also into puzzle solving and that kind of nature of things. So that's pretty cool. So you're not all like the more sciencey based things. Correct. That's pretty darn cool. Yes, I am. So I think that concludes our interview with Hannah Miller. Uh, thank you for coming in, and uh, thank you all for watching.